Dear colleagues, my name is Dr. Gennady Piavchenko, and I would like to present my report, Dynamics of Cerebral Cortex Blood Flow and Tissue Abnormalities Induced by Acute Respiratory Disorders. Here is an outline of my report. I will start from the introduction. As we all know, the prediction of the survival of the patients in the intensive care units depends on the severity of the disease. As we all know, the impairment of breathing causes the oxygen deficiency that results in all the organism, especially in the oxygen sensitive tissues like the cerebral cortex. We know that the oxygen deficiency that grows and grows and grows in the acute statements causes the brain death. So in our research, we were focusing on the process which is bidirectional. While the oxygen saturation of the tissue decreases, the acute hypoxia increases. So with the implementation of real-time optical diagnostics, which was the fluorescent spectroscopy, diffuse reflectance spectroscopy, and laser speckle contrast imaging, we were interested in evaluating of the dynamics of cerebral cortex blood flow and tissue ischemia induced by acute respiratory disorder. The goals of our research were the following. To modulate an acute statement of impairment for respiratory system, to estimate metabolic activity of cerebral cortex tissue by the NADH and FAD coenzymes, to evaluate oxygen saturation in brain cerebral cortex, to determine blood flow activity changes during respiratory disorder and to assess the structural post-mortal changes in cortical morphology. Materials and methods. After the fixation of the animal in the stereotaxic apparatus, we anesthetized and catheterized the animal and placed it into the system. After that, we administrated and injected the specific drugs which caused the respiratory, acute respiratory arrest. We had two months old rats and two weeks old rats for the measurements. For fluorescent spectroscopy and diffuse reflectance spectroscopy, we had two months old rats, which we recorded uh, for the uh, 20 minutes after the injection. And then we mathematically processed the spectra in the wavelengths of 365 and 450 for fluorescence spectroscopy and from 360 to 1000 for diffuse reflectance spectroscopy. For the laser speckle contrast imaging methods, we used the uh, laser system and recorded again 20 minutes after the injection uh, of the drug combination that caused the respiratory arrest. And after that, we processed the speckle images. All the animals were stored in controlled environmental conditions with the feeding and health status evaluation and proper randomization into the groups. For the anesthesia, we took the Zolotil 100 produced by Vibrac France uh, for 0 0.3 milliliter per uh, 150 gram animal. We catheterized the right external jungler vein. We had a great choice of the vessels, but uh, in according to the literature, we've chosen the right external jungler vein. We used PM60 polymer catheters produced by Psyket with the external diameter of 0 0.8 millimeters. We catheterized the animals with a protocol uh, given here, this is quite a short protocol. For the methods, uh, the operational access to the skull bone dissecting the, uh, of soft tissue for two weeks old rats for laser speckle contrast imaging method was selected. And for the two month old rats for fluorescence and diffuse reflectance spectroscopy methods, we used operational access to the brain cortex by drilling a window into the skull. We use the house build system with stereotaxic apparatus and used the uh, Paxinus and Watson red brain stereotaxic atlas for the identification of cortical structures. Here is the scheme 
full fluorescence and diffuse reflectance spectroscopy. Here is the uh, uh, halogen source with LED lamp and laser source with the uh, fine needle probe uh, with a spectrometer bore band source and two sources for LED and laser source. For the laser speckle contrast imaging, there is the SCAM uh, which we, uh, of the system which we used. Special algorithm has been used for speckle contrast images obtaining and the averaging speckle contrast formula, which is given in this slide. Here we have the breathing impairment model. We used the uh, non-depolarizing uh, muscle relaxant, which is cystrosocurium in a little dose with a propofol. So that immediately caused the spasm of the respiratory muscles and the immediate acute respiratory arrest of the animal. After that, the results were processed for the speckle contrast parameters uh, in MATLABs software using, using the temporal algorithm for averaging over substacks and for fluorescence and diffuse reflectance spectra, special algorithm in the MATLAB software environment. The processing of the result was carried out using the origin pro software. For the histological analysis, we fixed the brain in the buffered formalin, made the brain tissue sec sections uh, stained with uh, the hematoxylin and neosine, and identified the signs of cortical hypoxia. For the ethical conclusions, we uh, say that all the animal manipulations and experimental conditions were reviewed and approved by the ethical committee of Royal State University. The results of our research are the following. Here is the example of the speckle contrast imaging uh, recording for the first 12 minutes of our experiment, as well as after that, there were no practically differences noted. As we can see in the first minute, uh, there is the distribution of the blood that goes, comes from the hemispheres microcirculatory uh, vessels into the large vessels of the uh, venous vessels of the uh, brain cortex, and then generalization of the blood flow into the large venous sinuses, the sagittal and the uh, horizontal ones. During the first 12 minutes, we see how the blood flows from the hemispheres to the large venous sinuses given in this video. We've chosen two areas of interest to see the mean speckle contrast dynamics in time. We've chosen the vessels of microcirculation on the left and the large venous sinus on the right. As we can see here, the mean speckle contrast in the vessels of microcirculation grows within first two minutes approximately. Meanwhile, this growth in the uh, large venous sinuses is less expressed and the uh, mean speckle contrast grows is not goes more than 0 0.12. Meanwhile, for the uh, microcirculation where uh, vessels, the growth is about 0 0.18. For the assessment of fluorescence spectroscopy and diffuse reflectance spectroscopy, here are the examples of the uh, intact area from the baseline tests. Then the results were processed with the specific uh, reflectance normalizations in accordance to the algorithms that are given in this slide. Here are the results, one of the examples of the breathing impairment case. Here we can see that the excitation uh, slowly grows in the wavelengths of 365 nanometers. Meanwhile, it descends for the excitation of 450 nanometers. And especially for the first five minutes, we see how uh, acutely it grows. Meanwhile, for the diffuse reflectance spectra, we see 
little bit of growth in the first five minutes, and then it was stable. Uh, at the second example of breath impairment case, we see again the growth of the uh, intensity in the excitation uh, wave in the wavelengths of 365 nanometers and the strong degrees in the excitation of 450 nanometers. And again, in the first five minutes, we see the growth of the intensity in time. In the morphology, we saw the uh, signs of numeric hypoxic changes in the neuronal morphology, the uh, smooth, dark neurons, and the local perivascular edema of the vessels in the green circles. To summarize, we can say that in acute respiratory failure, there is a gradual increase in hypoxic disorders and a slowdown of hemodynamic processes. All these processes are noted in the first 20 minutes from the start of the recording. To conclude, I would like to say that the blood circulation in the vessels of the cerebral cortex stops in case of respiratory arrest after about two minutes, and the changes in the brain tissue oxygen saturation under breathing impair practically do not change. Mean speckle contrast increases in time faster for the medium and small vessels. Meanwhile, in the large venous sinuses, it reaches the contrast values of the other vessels only 10 minutes after breathing stops. And at the point of one and a half of minute after the start, this value is almost 1.5, two times less than in small and medium vessels. This may be used to personalize the management of patients after acute circulatory disorders and respiratory arrest in the prognosis and rehabilitation. Thank you for your attention.